I would like you to rate yourself. Where do you feel you are with that skill? Um, I am stuck on like measuring to the nearest inch and mostly in um, weight and length because like I just I keep forgetting how many inches are in a foot or how many. He gathered something from this first paragraph. Arath, why do they live below ground? Because it's cool and moist. Good. And why do they only come out at night? Because it's also cool and moist. Ah. So why do they live below ground? It's cool and moist. Yeah. It's really cool. Have you ever dug in the sand of the beach before? When you get lower and lower, what's the temperature feel like? Cool. It gets cooler and cooler, doesn't it? I was a young, ambitious, 22-year-old teacher, and um, I was just anxious to work with kids. I had a second grade teaching partner, and she would um, really just come after school and give me the next week's unit. This is where we're going to go. This is what we're going to do. And then she'd leave. And I'd be sitting there with all of this stuff thinking, OK, now what do I do? <laughs> We started conversations about, what are you teaching right now? What are you teaching right now? And everyone was on a different page for what they were teaching and when they were teaching and how they were teaching it. So in the past, you kind of, you know, we may have talked about what we were gonna do and we shut our door and we kind of did it. Well, in the last several years, they've become our kids. Okay, and what would be the same? I have the text that we used last week. We thought we could use the same text that we had, pull out a couple of sentences so they're familiar with the text. They won't be reading it, won't be an issue. And then they'll have to pull out, oh, that one has dates. These are the key, the key vocab words for the yes. level one kids. Yes. Here at South Sioux, we've really embraced the, that idea of a professional learning community where we're professionals working together to help these kids succeed. I can look at Mrs. Horky or Mrs. Martin or Mrs. Kennelly and say, I don't know what I'm doing with this, can you please help me? And it's just a free exchange of ideas. Friday, I'll do that fraction fish. It's a, it's a review game, it's cards, but they review simplifying, mixed numbers, adding, subtracting, and multiplying. They liked it. Well, I like it too because they have to self-check each other. It took them a while to figure that part out. Right. They need a little guidance to how to do that. When we come together to meet on a weekly basis, we run through, um, first, what do we want them to know? What do we expect? Learning targets are something that we have to focus on. So what we have to learn for like the main part of the day. The learning target was, I can multiply and divide fractions. The fraction? Yeah, your equivalent fraction. Perfect. Good job the way you use your vocabulary. So then you need a four times one plus 12. The second aspect is looking at the assessments. You know, how are we going to know if they know it or not? OK, so you think the borrowing with the mixed numbers was tough. All right, how many agree with Rayshawn on that one? After I looked at the assessments last night, I think that was one of the struggles that many of you had too. So don't worry, we're gonna still practice it. You don't have permission to forget, do you? All right, you're gonna see it uh, again. The third aspect is, okay, they don't know it. What are we going to do now? How are we going to intervene? And then that fourth question is, they do get it. How are we going to enrich them? So basically, everything I do in my class is kind of split into, they don't get it. How am I going to help them? They do get it. What are we gonna do now? Two minutes and five seconds to read the 100-word passage. The, the problem is not necessarily the fluency, it's the pausing. It, phrasing. Phrasing, Is yes. he going word by word? No, he's just stopping in the middle of a sentence. And then he'll um, finish it and then stop in the middle of another sentence. I'm glad you brought your finger up to the table because that helps you to get every word. But do you remember the difference we talked about between pointing under every word and sliding under every oh, word? yeah. What seems to work better for you? What helps you to read in a smoother way? Slide. And then slide it under those words. If you succeed, you shall become my wife. The team plays a vital role in the success of all of our students, and they rely on each other's strengths to help develop their skills and their practice in order to become the best teachers that they can. I think we had the quiz on for multiplying fractions on Thursday. So maybe I'll do a... Somebody's gonna need to do a review. A review. Why not I do homework help Thursday then? And we can do homework. I would like a homework help. Which day? Friday. Okay, then we got everybody for a homework help.
Once we prioritized our standards, we created a proficiency scale, and we wanted to create a way that it would be visual for the kids. So we are going to be doing a check-in on how well we think we're doing with our organizational text pattern. You remember, everyone starts at a level one, don't they? Some people are at a level one right now. Some people were at a level one maybe in second grade. Everyone's at a different spot. We talk about climbing the ladder, so you go up to the next rung, which is the level two. Okay, I know the vocabulary, which we place up there, and those um, easier concepts. Okay, if I know how to do that, I'm gonna climb up to a level three. And the three is what we want them to do by the end of third grade. That is the standard that we want them to do. And then the level four would be above and beyond. How about you, Brock, where are you at? 2.5, all right. Which I see you made a lot of growth. So how are you going to move from a 2.5 to a three? What do we still need to work on? Ah, the description one. Have we talked about that as a pattern yet? No, we haven't. So we're getting there, right? So you still want to work on that? So do you still feel like you're a three or do you think you might be a 2.5? I like that idea. So we still have a few of those patterns we still need to work on. And hopefully by the time we're done, we're going to be up to a three, right? All right, nice job. So it's okay if we're at the end of the unit and main idea and you're still a two, we have until the end of the year to get to a level three. We're just going to kind of leave that open-ended. Um, so today, all four sixth grade language arts teachers decided we were going to be teaching author's perspective. And we all had the same learning target with the same goal, but each one um, taught it differently. So this passage that we're going to read, the author is going to have an opinion and it's going to be a pretty passionate, pretty strong opinion about. So we're gonna read it, and I'm gonna have you see if you can figure out what is the author's perspective again, and then answer that question. What is your perspective? Um, I agree with the author's opinion because I like to go on vacations because they're very fun. On your post-it, um, I would like you to write down, how do you determine an author's perspective? Just one sentence. What is it? It's like he wants you to walk right or right. For language arts, I've been working on author's purpose. So what I need to know is like um, the author's like way of how he describes it, like kind of like his tone. So uh, the way you know if it's entertaining is basically if they're like like talking animals or like something funny. And the way you know it's described is like there's like really like like really good words in it, like strong vocabulary. At the end of the day, the kids all received the same skill. They all learned how to examine author's purpose and analyze text to determine the perspective in that text. It doesn't matter which teacher they have, they're still learning the same content and skills and they'll be assessed in the same way at the end. I think just going off of what we talked about earlier, we did a check, a CFU on author's purpose at their level two, like could they just identify the author's purpose? And I know I have a few that really could benefit from a reteach or a review on that skill. So did you guys find that same thing? The students see us working together and that they know that we're here for them. What does that student need? What does the grade level need? And I think when they see us being successful with each other, it teaches them to work together with each other. and just to encourage everybody to be successful. Kids aren't numbers. Kids aren't just a standard. It is the whole child, the whole person, and just really getting to know them and being able to really fill them with pride on the things that they do well, and also say, it's okay to not know it. Let, what are we going to do to help you get there and be proficient? I know where every single one of my students is all the time, and it's the PLC process that makes it happen. I mean, everything that they do gives me a reason to either enrich them or I need to intervene and help. And I'm really proud of the fact that every teacher here works towards that. And uh, we just, we won't let the kids fail. They will be successful. And that's why Nebraska loves our public schools. Nebraska loves our public schools. Nebraska loves. Maybe one more time. <laughs> Nebraska loves our public schools.